partnership between America and Islam must be based on what Islam is, not what it isn't. And I consider it part of my responsibility as President of the United States to fight against negative stereotypes of Islam wherever they appear. Can you say that? Media literate consumers? Media literate consumers. Yeah. So media is anything that, any way that we, we communicate with others. We use different things. We use media to communicate messages. Nine months before the president's speech, and during the 2008-2009 academic year, researchers from Temple University's Media Education Lab partnered with students and teachers from both Roberts Elementary School in Wayne, Pennsylvania, and Kuwait University in Kuwait. Having been aware of media representations of the Middle East, together we were interested in answering one fundamental question. What educational tactics could we use to address cultural misunderstandings, particularly of the Middle East? As with any good curriculum, we began by accessing students' prior knowledge. Let me, and let me explain what you guys got to do, okay? Everyone paying attention? Yeah. So you look at each image, right? And as a group, you talk about, is this happening in the Middle East? Does this picture look like it's taking place in the Middle East? Or does it not look like it's taking place in the Middle East? That's the Middle East or not? I don't think it snows anywhere in the Middle East. <laughs> Africa is hot. I don't, I've never been there. Everyone can look at the, um, the smart board. We're going to go over these images. And we would just like you to quickly tell us um, if you thought it was in the Middle East, why or why not. So who had to say? No, it is not the Middle East because they are ninjas. This could not be Middle East because there is not ocean there. No, not the Middle East. There are no trees there. I think it is hot in the Middle East, and so it would not snow. It looks like a mall, and I don't think the Middle East has malls. Now knowing third and fourth grade students' prior knowledge about the Middle East, the Roberts teachers and media specialist Maggie Caverly took charge of introducing new knowledge to the students. For example, Mrs. Nancy Chilly, a third grade teacher at Roberts, read to her students from the book The Breadwinner by Deborah Ellis and assigned comprehension and analysis activities accordingly. I can read that letter as well as Father can, Parabona whispered into the folds of her chador. Well, almost. She didn't dare say those words. The collages, um, they had to capture a piece of the story since the book we read had no photographs. They like story time in general, but I do think they connected with the character and the way it was written. They just constantly wanted to find out what happened next. Yeah, and you know, that's the challenge at, at, at third grade level. You have to, even though you're taking such a broad topic, you have to bring it to the level where they not only understand it, but they, they grasp it, they, they absorb it. Because you can talk to your blue in the face about uh, Asia, or you can talk about your part to Europe or part of Africa, but unless you actually bring them, uh, feel like they're, you're bringing them there and talking about student life, about what kids like, what foods they eat, they're, they're not going to really uh, buy into it. To be the Roberts Temple team agreed with Mr. Crane's assertions and wanted to help students build personal connections to the countries, people, and ideas discussed in relation to the Middle East. The team thus planned a variety of activities that engaged students' enthusiastic interests and most vivid imaginations. How many of you have seen the It's barbaric, but we're going to look at it as media literate consumers. And when we're media literate, that means we, what do we do? We listen, what else? We ask questions, what else? We learn stuff. We learn stuff. So we need each group to choose one person who's going to speak about it, who's going to read your, your response and your findings. So make sure you read and tell us what media literacy question that you, you chose and then tell us some of the answers. So we did how might different people interpret the message differently. And we did some people might think that they are just weird. That who is just weird? 
Oh. The characters are dressed weird. Okay, I'll read the next part. And they yeah. also um, might wait, think but, that it's not but a big But they also might think that it's not a big deal that um, Aladdin stole a loaf of bread because that it, it's just one little loaf of bread. How might different people interpret the message differently? We just, they might think they steal in the Middle East. It's not in the Middle East. They might think it's all sand in the Middle East. People might think people only ride camels in the Middle East. Students practice the active viewership skills they were learning by viewing and thinking about an independent short film called Santa Claus in Baghdad. I have seen you worship your own freedom. Even as slaves humble themselves before a tyrant and praise him, though he slays them. Over the course of several months, students and teachers researched the film's context and discussed its story, symbols, and messages. In the beginning of the story, why was Bilal really, really <coughs> excited? Does anybody remember? Bowie? Yeah, read a book and uh, found out about Santa Claus. And why else was he excited? Good question. Okay, last two. Gabby? Um, if, they're, if they're even not from Iraq, I wonder how they would know the Arabic um, literature stuff. Very spectacular question, Juliana. Then in May of that year, the students had the very unique opportunity to meet the writer and director of Santa Claus in Baghdad, Mr. Rauf Zaki and ask him questions about the filmmaking process and about his experiences growing up in the Middle East. Because they make films that try to make you think about other people uh, who live in parts of the world where you hear about them in the news or in the media, wrong things. What was your inspiration for the movie? Uh, basically, uh, my inspiration was to make a movie that will make, you, make uh, American kids like you see uh, Iraqi kids, uh, what they have in common with you, uh, and I think it's many things that you have in common. To continue exploring these commonalities and spark dialogue between the two cultures, third graders at Roberts wrote, storyboarded, and filmed with handheld flip cameras, media messages to share with their pen pal friends at Kuwait University. Comments in our notebook. Hi, my name is Ava. I like to do crazy experiments in my science textbooks. Bye! These videos were then posted to the project's Wikispace pages, which facilitated the students' pen pal exchange. So, what we do here, each of the pen pals, they go to their discussion and they post. Um, you know, certain things, like Farida started, she said, do you have a question for me? Do you have a question for me? I'm ready for any questions. Um, you have about Kuwait or my culture. Um, where is Kuwait located? Um, what is your favorite color? The pen pal exchange was one of the most potent means the team had devised for bringing the Middle East to life for the Robert students. But while this cross-cultural communication did provide a rich educational and motivational tool, by the end of the school year, teachers and researchers could conclude only one thing. That is, their fruitful partnership had created a learning environment that was both innovative and invigorating, but the task of bridging cultural understanding, they found, would be an ongoing process to which they had contributed one successful step and several curious faces. Kicking his legs. And he popped his dad in the face. I wouldn't do that. I know. Yeah. I would do that. My dad's nice. You I was the one that pointed that out. <laughs> Hi, Hi. 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 Hi, everybody. Did I know? Hi, Mom. Hi.